what what are you planning for the 40th? Uh, well, Bernstein yeah. celebration. Uh, it's it's the 100th anniversary of Bernstein. He was uh -huh. born 1918, August 25th, and so we're gonna like almost every orchestra uh, is going. We're gonna do a concert dedicated to the music of Mr. B and which will include the Pacific Chorale uh, in Chichester Songs, which is a wonderful uh -huh. choral work, uh, violin, serenade, um, uh, prelude, fugues, and riffs, and some Broadway. So we're c covering a large spectrum of his musical output from choral works to solo works to Broadway to jazz. And for you, that's personal when you're talking about Bernstein, right? Yeah, I mean, talk, it's... Talk about your experience with him. I, I just... I'm really fortunate because I got to spend, my time with him came at the end of his life when he was really ripe and ready to just teach and Im just impart all of his knowledge and wisdom and to young soloists, to young conductors, to young composers, to young orchestras. And he just wanted to give, just to teach. So were you a student or what was the relationship? I was there? a student for about a week. Well, he, I was a conducting fellow at Tanglewood, and he came and mm. conduct. You know, he mentored us. But then, from th from that one week for the next five or six years, I was really like one of the the young conductors that he took an interest in and helped. And I went on a large tour with him in the summer of '89. I ended up conducting the premiere of his last work on what was inevitably his last concert, August 19th, 1990. Um, and he was the kind of person, if you just were around him, you learned. So I was always a student of his. Any one or two things he imparted to you that, that, that you... A, a couple. One is that you've got to give back. Um, and when, when he said to give back, or another term he would always use, fly the flag, it was all about education. It was all about helping younger, helping the less. I mean, it was all about giving back, giving to others what he had given to me. That was very, very crucial. And the other interesting, it's a little musical, he says, don't wear the yoke, like the oxen yoke. And for him, the yoke was the metronome. He says, don't put on that yoke. Don't, don't wear that yoke, which allowed us to just free the playing field. Like there were no more boundary lines for our musical interpretation. We, we, we felt a freedom. And when we also had the chance to see music through his eyes and with his passion, we, we for a brief instant were allowed a vista into music and, and its inner workings that sure. we couldn't have seen by ourselves. But it allowed us to start looking differently at notes and at music itself. Wow. I don't know uh, if that's what you wanted. Uh, uh, th yeah, no, that's next that, season that's also includes a couple of operas, so we're expanding the opera initiative next year. Right. And a work that Carl's talked about since it was relatively early in his tenure that he he conducted this opera for really a children's opera by Ravel. And, um, that's yeah. combined with Madame Butterfly. And right, uh, and we're finishing with Mahler's Eighth Symphony of a Thousand, and we have wonderful concerts throughout the year. Bernstein Celebration, a guitar festival. Olga Kern is opening with Rachmaninoff's third uh, piano concerto. We're finishing that program with Bolero, uh, which is going to have, in addition to the performance of Bolero, it will be a visual history of the Pacific Symphony in those 17 minutes that wow. it takes to perform. To go back to something, uh, to expand on uh, what we were talking about in the show, um, 28 years here. Uh, did you ever think about leaving? Did anybody ever try to woo you? Or, you know, why, why have you stayed for so long? I'm sure you had opportunities to, to go elsewhere. Well, throughout my 28 years, I've always had other positions. I mean, right now I have two other positions. Uh -huh. I'm a professor at visiting artistic or orchestral leader at USC. I'm the music director of the National Orchestra of Costa Rica and I do a lot of guest conducting. So I've always had other positions, uh, whether it be in Weimar with the Staatskapelle Weimar or the uh -huh. Komische Oper in Berlin, or even being a principal guest conductor in Stuttgart. That's not, that's not um, so unusual for a conductor to have more than one position. But you know, I would say that the relationship 
kept developing um, between the orchestra and me, the audience and me, the board, as John said, between John and I and Lou Spisto, his predecessor, and I. So there just didn't seem to be a ceiling that had started to appear on the growth of the orchestra. And when when in the year 2000 we decided, okay, there's going to be this concert hall that's going to open up, that that was a that was a new beginning. Our recordings have been new new beginnings. The tour to tour to China is like it's it's not the finishing of something; it's a uh -huh. continuation of a growth pattern. The signing of our new contract. The, we have a new office. We have this, as John called it, the trifecta: the Carnegie Hall, the PBS special, mm -hmm. the China tour. So things just keep developing. And there didn't seem to be a slowing of, of musical growth or relationships yeah. growing, growing uh, of relationships. So I've, I've been asked the same question <coughs> because managers definitely don't typically stay 20 years. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I said, uh, well, you know, I've had the blessing of running three or four orchestras without ever leaving because of the chapters, these kind of huh. interesting chapters. I, when I came, uh, Carl was I think not quite at his 10th anniversary. And it was an opportunity to reflect on his first stage and we talked about well, what are your aspirations? He talked about creating new music, programming, started the American Composers Festival and it was a real joyous chapter in our history. And then it was very clear from Henry Sagerstrom and the whole family that they were gonna build a concert hall. And we, he really set the stage for a lot of strategic right. conversations at the board level, which was, how do you ready yourself for a concert? So, so both of you feel yeah. like you've been in a situation where there are constantly new opportunities. Exactly. Uh, which maybe gets to <coughs> the observation that this symphony has grown along with the county itself, that Orange County has, has grown population-wise, at least until the last couple of years, it's been very steady growth. Have you seen a change in the audience uh, over the years or, or in the county and how you're perceived within the county? Well, no doubt that the orchestra has achieved a completely different level of uh, reputation and I think some of that comes with the extraordinary development of the Sagerstrom Center as a institution. I mean, we were playing in a high school in 1986 and then they opened and our lives changed and then the new hall and our lives changed. and. So for sure, um, that has been a part of it. But I think with Carl's vision for educational and community engagement to be in really a regional presence. I mean, it's interesting the word used, the word regional orchestra. Yeah. And it's almost as if that's a secondary notion as a major orchestra. That's how it used to be literally nomenclature in our field was major, regional, local. Uh -huh. All orchestras are community orchestras. And we have to remind ourselves that we are of the community for the community. We don't exist without Orange County. So, of course, the county has changed. It's more diverse. It's, the diversity is exciting for us. We've had festivals where we've celebrated all of these different cultures. I mean, Los Sonidos de Mexico was an amazing festival. Three years of Asian influences on American music that Carl curated. That was incredible. So. I think the more that we engage with our uh, community locally, that local acclaim will develop if it's an authentic relationship, if we're listening and then we're curating yeah. and offering. And the word in our mission I think is the most important word is serve. We really are here to serve the community and that means giving without necessarily an expectation of something coming back. Wow. And I believe that's happening now. So Car uh, Carl, speaking of local, regional, major, how does it feel to be in the shadow of LA Philharmonic and Disney Hall and Dudamel? Is that a blessing or a curse or, you know, how, how do you see that? Because right next door, you've got one of the great operas of the world, or one, of the, one of the great orchestras well, of the of course, world. and you know, we're proud to be in the same general area as the LA Philharmonic. I mean, what an illustrious history with the Hollywood Bowl and the you know, the, the Disney Hall, as you say. Yeah. I mean, we're very proud of their success. And, but we, we tend to mind our own, own, own garden. You know, we're yeah. Orange County, we're not LA. We have a different personality. Our community is different. Um, I liken our orchestra and our community as though we were very young high school sweethearts that yeah. have 
grown up together, walking hand to hand, hand in hand, uh-huh. and in a relationship that is maturing at the same time. And that's really crucial because some, some cities have a great city with culture which is waning or we have a great orchestra but a city that's waning and that's when things get in trouble. And mm-hmm. we've really been blessed to have this relationship with our community so that we're growing, as you said, uh-huh. Orange County's growing, culture's growing, we're growing simultaneously at the same time, step by step. And I think this has been one of the reasons why we've continued to grow. And but we we love the uh, LA Philharmonic and all that they do. And um, but we have our own identity down here. And none of the institutions in America, no matter how large they are, are possibly meeting the needs of the broader community. There's no way the LA Philharmonic could effectively serve Orange County. So you know. What I find exciting is when an orchestra, whatever orchestra in the country, has done something sensational and it gets national attention, that is so good for orchestras. Because we really do fight the media battle. Uh, you know, Thank you for having us on. But there are very few platforms to promote orchestral music. And I think, so we're totally cheerleading our peers when they do great work. And they cheerlead us when we have a great sensation. I've got more nice notes about our going to Carnegie and China from my peers. So the, the, co- the competition is, is in a way a very friendly competition in our field, but <laughs> much more sharing. How did you do it? What, what did you do? So there, you know, the LA Phil has convened large discussions about music education and I've been on panels. Uh-huh. With their ha- ha- staff. Do you know Duda Mel or have you ever talked to him? Or I haven't actually. Really? I haven't. You haven't. But I, I used to conduct in El Sistema the, with the, in the Simon Bolivar Orchestra. I used to conduct them Maybe regularly you know. from 1985 to 1990. From 1986 to 1997, I was regularly going wow. down to. Well, to let's Venezuela. conclude by asking you how many cities around the world or how many countries have you been in? I mean, I got to believe you've been all over the world. I've, I've had a, a very <laughs> blessed experience, you know. I, but I, I always like to say uh, my very first uh, composer in residence was Frank DeKelly, who's the professor at, of composition at USC. And I've done his works in Vienna, in Austria. I've done them in Germany. I've done them with the Philadelphia Orchestra. I've done them in South America. I've done them in Central America, I've done them in Hawaii, and I've done them in Hong Kong, and everywhere I've gone with his music that we championed, it's been received beautifully. And so I really I really feel blessed to have had all these experiences. And if I could just one more, let's take Tchaikovsky's Sixth Symphony. We always say musical music is a universal language that brings everybody together. And this is a perfect example because in 2011, I conducted in Damascus with the Syrian National Symphony, Tchaikovsky's Sixth Symphony. I've done it in Germany. I've done it with students in at least three different universities with the Pacific Symphony. And I've also done it in a concert with the Beijing Philharmonic in, in the concert hall in the Forbidden City. The one thing that I realize is that everybody's reaction, audience and orchestras alike, is the same about Tchaikovsky's music. It moves them. The way they show that, that they have been touched and emotionally touched might be different, but everybody is equally as touched emotionally by Tchaikovsky's pathetique, and every musician plays with the same degree of passion. It, 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 it makes itself known in slightly different ways, but you can see the commitment, you can see the tears in their eyes, you can see the passion they're playing. And music is that international language, and that's one of my real proofs of that. Very good, well, that is a wonderful note to end this discussion. Thank you again, Carl, John. Thank you. Thank it's you, Rick. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Continued, uh, continued success. We hope. And uh, bon voyage. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.